Hello and welcome to this small presentation on the Cerebral Debugger. Uh, so what we're going to do here is talk about um, the debugger and um, we are going to do that by just going through it step by step. But first, let's get an overview. Uh, we are running the Todo MVC application on the left side and we have the Chrome extension, uh, the debugger, on the right side. You can download it from the Chrome store. Below it, we have the console. Uh, so this is a pretty sweet setup, uh, but you can, of course, structure this however you want. Um, okay, so let's get cracking. Um, first of all, we have these two buttons here, and that is, of course, related to time travel debugging. So if I trigger some more signals here, we see that uh, we have four signals and we're currently uh, reproduced, well, we have produced state up to the fourth signal. If I now hit this button, we can see uh, that we have uh, the state uh, produced up to the third signal. Uh, so I can go back and forth there, and as we can see, the UI updates, and um, that is really nice for debugging purposes. We used to have a slider here, uh, but we decided to remove it because it's just really a fancy thing. It doesn't, uh, it's not very practical. So usually you just want to step uh, one step at a time, back and forth in time. So yeah, uh, that's uh, time travel debugging. And then we have this reset button. So if I hit that, it resets the uh, application state to its initial state. We can also click this model and that will log out the all the state of the application. Uh, so you can traverse that and check that out. Uh, we also have this checkbox. So currently it will reset on refresh. So if I do some changes here, I refresh, it will reset the state. But if I uncheck this checkbox and type something and I refresh, then it will uh, reproduce that state. And that's really nice when you do changes to your code. You don't have to reproduce the state all the time. Um, so that's how that's working. And maybe now we should talk about the signals here. Uh, and I'm not going to talk about the signal we're currently looking at because it's related to the router and I just don't want to go into that right now. Uh, so let's reset this and do a change here. Okay, so let's talk about this signal, new to do title changed. As we can see, it's indicated with uh, a sync uh, text here, the orange text. And that's because this signal is being run synchronously. And uh, you usually want to do this related to inputs because by default, Cerebral will run the signals between animation frames. But that not, that's not good when you want to do uh, a state update related to an input. You want that to instantly get back into the input to avoid any flickers or other unwanted behavior. So this is something you would type uh, or, or do when you run the signal. Um, okay, uh, so this signal runs an action called set new to do title. And it indicates that it took uh, one millisecond. If it starts closing in on 60 milliseconds, you should uh, Check, uh, check it, see if you can do something to reduce that, as that will start to affect um, the UI in uh, relating to animation frames. But, but it's just an indication, it's not like a perfect timing, so, um, so yeah, use it with caution. Um, then we have the input, so uh, each action will have an input, and that input is shared between actions. So in this case, when we triggered the signal, we uh, gave it an input title with the letter H. And we used that to do a set mutation uh, on the new to-do title. And we passed in the value H. Okay, so if I click new to-do title now, we can see that, yes, indeed, this state now has the value H. And we can also click the model here to, to check that everything's okay. Uh, and of course it is. Okay, so that's a simple signal, but let me now hit enter and we can see a bit, uh, a bit more complex example. In this case, we are running uh, a few more actions here. And what I want you to see is that uh, even though we are not uh, passing in an input here initially, this first action gives an output. 
and that output is ref zero. And you can, of course, traverse these uh, inputs and outputs. So now you see that all the actions after, uh, after this first one actually has access to this ref uh, zero uh, input. So that's nice. Um, okay, so we have a to do, set visible to do, set all checked, doing their, their thing. And then we have set counters. And this is the action that will actually get this duration indicator. And that's because all these actions run synchronously one after the other. Uh, but then we hit this uh, next action called save to do, and we got all this orange stuff all around there. And that's because uh, this action is defined inside an array when when you like express your signal, uh, and that because uh, and that uh, um, means that it's running asynchronously. In this case, we just have one action, but you could have multiple actions inside that array. And those would be listed down here and be connected to this orange line, indicating that they run in parallel. Um, and also the action itself is indicated with this async orange text here. As we can see, uh, the action gets an input and it uh, has an output. Uh, but it doesn't do any state mutations because asynchronous actions can't do that. Uh, but they can output, uh, just have a single output or they can output to paths. Uh, and actually all actions can output to a specific path, as we can see an example of here. So save to do uh, had an output to the success path and it gave it um, an output and that's the ID we can see here. So after it was done doing the saving, it uh, started this success path and it has one action called update to do. Uh, and as we can see, the input now is both the ref and the ID. And it did some mutation stuff, and then it was done. Uh, we can check out the error here. Uh, so if, if the save to do action uh, gave an output error instead, it would run this action. But it didn't, and that's because it's collapsed and uh, a bit transparent. Okay, um, so now you have pretty much gotten an insight to, to how you use the debugger and what information it gives you. Uh, and other functionality related to the debugger. So what's important to, to kind of like take from this is that usually, uh, well, I like to think about applications as three layers. You have your UI, you have your state changing flow, and then you have the actual state of the application. So what you see here on the left is of course the UI. The signals here are the state changing flow of your application. And if you click this model up here, you can uh, dive right into the current state of your application. So you have really great insight into all these three layers, and that is the mental image uh, you need to have in your head to understand what's happening uh, and to fix things and scale your application. Okay, great. Uh, I hope this was an okay introduction and that you will try out Cerebral and the debugger. So um, have fun with that.